All right, we are in the Trooper, and this video is all about SPL testing with the Kicker L7X12. We're gonna put it through its test, see what it can do with, you know, 3,000 watts. I've got the AMM1 back there, so we'll see what kind of power we're getting after rise, but this should be a fun one. We'll also check out a few tracks to see how it sounds on music because I was promised it sounds good on music. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the SPL testing. All right, the first test will be a frequency sweep. This will be with the sublevel at negative 12. So we just wanna see where our peak frequency is. That way we can jump into frequencies later for high SPL testing. So I will do this at moderate volume, but we'll still monitor the SPL at these more moderate levels. Then we'll check the frequency and then we'll begin some SPL testing. low volume we got 135.8 so let's see what frequency around 38 hertz so we know when we start frequency testing we'll go around 35 ish and work our way up let's run the sweep again with a little more juice and see how it does up to a 140.3 let's see if we're at the same frequency this time 36 Hertz okay good to know that test was at negative 60 B now we're gonna go to zero and see how much we gain and what frequency we are at We got a 142.6. Let's uh, let's see what frequency. 38 hertz again. So we know 36 to 38 hertz should be our peak. Can go into SPL testing with those numbers and see where we land. Start at 35 hertz and let it work its way up to 38 hertz, and then we'll see what kind of number we get. We'll also check the AMM1 after that, and we'll see what we're rising up to, and we'll kind of see. If we're clipping, if we're not clipping, if we can maybe get a little more gain. Let's run this test and we'll come back and maybe make some adjustment. We'll just run the test and see what happens. We got a 143.2. So let's check the AMM1. Let's see what kind of rise we're getting. Let's see what kind of power we're getting. We'll do this using a sweep so that it will play and we can see where it's rising to, what kind of power we're getting. We ran that test. I went ahead and reviewed the footage. I didn't see it clip once, so I think we can get a little more gain out of this old sound cubed amp. So we're going to go a little bit up on the gain and see if we get any decibel gains from that. We got into some light clipping there. We did get more power. We did not see any gains here on the decibel meter. Now we got that number with specific frequencies. So I think we can go back through the frequencies and see if we get a slight gain now. All 
right, Kicker promised me that this sub makes music, so let's try it on a few tracks at more moderate volumes. I'll lower it to around negative 10, negative 12 dB, somewhere around there, and we'll see how it sounds musically. So I'm excited to let you guys hear this because, you know, of course I've been beating on this thing as much as I can. So with that being said, let's listen to it. Alright, excuse the sweat. It's actually hot here in Arkansas today and I don't want to run the air conditioner because I need all the voltage to that amp. So I want to try just a music test and you can see both windows are down. So this would be just like any other day jamming down the street. We've got the dB meter reset. I'm going to turn the gain up to, you know, negative 6 dB somewhere that you might listen to it when you're actually really trying to get down. Let's see what it does with this track that admittedly is not super bass heavy, but I think it sounds pretty good. So we'll see that and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. I'm back with my final thoughts. Let's talk about the SPL testing on the L7X. So there's a few things that I noticed. One is I don't have enough power to get full SPL out of this subwoofer. Now it does really well on the power I gave it. At peak, I saw 3,500 watts, but realistically it was around 2,500 to 2,800 watts continuously. And I was able to get 143.2 decibels with that. Now with more power you could certainly certainly do better and i have a 5k amp here that i may try in the future to get towards that 150 number with a single sub it's going to take a little bit more than more power though and i don't think 5k is enough currently in the trooper i only have a 100 amp alternator and two jy power nxt hybrid capacitor batteries so i'm at the limit of what my electrical can handle so with that being said I think this thing performed beautifully. It, uh, it's a very powerful, and even though it's only 4 dB louder than any other sub I've had in there, it is a world of difference. Just listening to it, the low end extension, it really, really is, it's just its own animal. And the first time I really cranked it up, it, I scared myself. I, uh, I was listening to Basstronics, Bass I Love You, and when the bass hit, it, it scared me. Now we do have another caveat. This subwoofer is nowhere near broken in. Once it gets broken in, the suspension's a little bit softer. I think we could get a little bit more SPL. So that's something to test in the future. Kicker promised me that this thing would sound good on music, so I tried it on several 
several different tracks that you guys can't hear on YouTube, but I also played a YouTube track so you guys can hear. And uh, this sub in this recommended enclosure, I think it sounds really good. It's no SQ sub, you're not gonna use an SQ competition, but just as an everyday subwoofer, I think it sounds really good. It's nice on transitions, it's not sloppy, and I think it sounds tight overall in this enclosure. And if you were worried that this was just a bass sub and you could not listen to it with regular music, I think that is no longer a concern. If you kind of agree with some of the subs that I've tested before and I thought sounded good, you think they sound good, this will be a safe bet for you. So overall, I think this thing is an absolute monster at $699 and you're gonna see people that are much better SPL than me put out some insane numbers with these things and I can't wait to see that. And if you're waiting on a full review, my buddy Derek over at Wilson Audio Labs will be doing a full in-depth review and guess what? My guy has so much power that he could put a black hole on the east coast of the United States. So be prepared for him to put some serious, serious power on the Kicker L7X. Now that that is done, I have at least one more L7X video coming up. If, if you guys wanna see that process of me building the enclosure that the L7X was in, I'll also give you the cut sheet so you can build one exactly like it if you want to. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. And I hope to catch you on the very next video. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, but the six star or more members get a special shout out. And that is 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego Audio, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Box Boy Audio Sound Solutions, Jesus Tires, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Scott Dilbeck, D. Stewart, David Koslick, Scott McCord, Matthew Tolberg, Cornut, Trucker 9000, Bobby Burkett, Kevin Lautner, James Childers, Baba, Thomas Marshall, Living Loud with Andy, Neil Nato, Chris Cogburn, Lars Madsen, and Old School Stereo. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the Patreon team and get exclusive Patreon-only content, including a monthly Patreon-only hangout stream. It's a really good time. You guys are missing out. And if you want to join, check me out at patreon.com slash high 5 Vega. Oh, 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 oh.